Thank you very much. It is now my honor and privilege to invite you, Mr. President, to address the new reason in government officials and the nation at large. Mr. President, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you. Let me recognize the cabinet colleagues that are here, provincial minister, and also permanent secretaries, uh, secretary of cabinet, uh, welcome from leave, um, and permanent secretaries, other senior colleagues, state house, and those that are from elsewhere, and our family members, the colleagues are here, and um, media, thank you for being here this afternoon. I know this has been short notice. As you can see, there are men in uniform. When we appoint them, we do it at short notice uh, for obvious reasons. But thank you for being here. Um, first, I want to congratulate the four citizens, fellow citizens, who have been appointed to serve in these critical roles um, in the governance of our country. All of you have taken serious responsibilities to save the country at this stage of our country's development with the challenges that we're going through, especially the climate change induced challenges, drought, which has, if you like, dosed in a lot of difficulties in the food security situation, in the energy security situation, or insecurities, really causing what I define as national insecurities. So you're coming in at a time that you need having accepted, and congratulating you, and you having accepted to exert all your skills, all your energies in saving our lovely country. Beautiful country. Sangya. Yes, we have challenges, but your government, your new dawn, your PND government has worked very hard three years and some days to reconstruct the country in many ways, especially the economic area so we can support the social side. And so you will be expected to perform your roles diligently, diligently. For the permanent secretary, you are going into water. And one of the challenges that has arisen because of the drought is the inadequacy in what is called life. As it is said, water is life. So if there's no water or if water challenges, life is challenged. Human consumption, animal consumption, industrial use irrigation, which we want to move to. But without water, it's difficult. Hence the need for us to water harvest. But when we water harvest without energy, most of which is generated from water, hydro, H2O, since you're a technical man, then we have a double tragedy, which leads to a triple tragedy in terms of slowing down the economic activity. So, P.S. Kamanga, you are a veteran in this area, and you have been carefully selected. After a lot of thoughtfulness to the process, and you are the citizen that can help us to conserve the water, water and sanitation, conserve the water, water harvest, irrigation, and of course, precision irrigation. You and your minister are experts in this area, and we want to see a team, one team, not teams, one team, each member performing their respective function. There's a minister, head of the ministry, the chief executive of the ministry, running the ministry. We expect a lot from you and the people behind, all together with you. 
let me call it, call them those together with you. Leadership is a pyramid. You have to provide that leadership at the apex, after the ministers yourself. Army commander, deputy army commander, you are privileged citizens to be army commander, to be deputy army commander. I had a pep talk with you already, so I don't want to say the things I say to you in confidence, but you serve the army. As commander-in-chief, who is here, army commander, deputy army commander, men and women, officers, non-commissioned officers, non-military staff, all come together to deliver for Zambia through the Zambia. The military function is important, but you have to support the country when it's going through challenges like this. Food production, infrastructure, doesn't make you a lesser soldier, actually makes you a stronger soldier to be engaged in the country's economic challenges. We discuss quite a bit privately. And teamwork, teamwork. Ambassador, High Commissioner, so you're High Commissioner in Kenya, you've already been in Kenya, you're Deputy High Commissioner, you know the station, let's get on with the job. We want to see investments, not just from overseas, but from African countries as well, joint ventures. You're not on holiday. Uh, you were saying that to your colleagues in China last week, that you're not on holiday. There's a perception that going in the embassy is going to leisure, holiday, foreign affairs. There's a perception that, that foreign affairs is a holiday place. No. It is to work. What sort of work? Promote Zambia. Anchored on two aspects, foreign policy. Mr. Gang, foreign policy of Zambia under this government is anchored on two things. Peace, security, stability. One. Two, economic diplomacy. That's it. So, a diplomat, Zambian diplomats, must contribute towards peace, security, and stability. Zambian diplomat must be checking this month how many investments opportunities have I pushed back home to headquarters. I asked somebody, Minister, who is best somewhere, what, your consular general somewhere, I said, you, you've been here one year, two years. I haven't seen any investments coming from you. They will speak to you. I said, when I return, you phone foreign affairs, agree the template of what needs to be done. We should be in a hurry to develop this country, colleagues. So perform your role. Don't get involved in Kenyan politics. Leave the Kenyan politics to the Kenyans. But engage with the government. Business. Experiences Kenyans have. Tourism. Agriculture. Many areas. So be focused. So minister, we want performance template, PS. Two PS is there. We want a performance template that what is each ambassador doing? They're not there for, I've already said it, they're there for what we have sent them to do. So I think colleagues, this is it. Congratulations once more. Thank you to the families, family members for supporting your colleagues here. Give them more support now than ever before. Allow them to work, give them space to work. These are busy offices. Give them space. I'm very fortunate that my wife gives me space to work. Any hour I need to work, she understands I have to work. We have no arguments in the house. Work comes, must be done. So please, families, for you, this message is for you. Support these colleagues. Even if it's late hours, there's work to be done, give them support. Thank you very much, media. Thank you once more for your support. Thank you, colleagues.